It's interesting what Michael was saying that, um, you know, with legislation, and um, we're fortunate in Australia, there is legislation that allows what's something called a small-scale offer. And that means any entity can actually sell shares to 20 personal investors, retail investors, in any one year. And if you want to know the details, it's in Section 708 of the Corporations Act. But just as um, Michael uh, was talking about the passion in which he's worked with the people and ended up in the Rose Garden, 25 years ago, our founder, Tony Pauls, did exactly the same thing. He campaigned, he came from Tyree, he campaigned around New South Wales and all over the place fighting for the rights of people to be able to ra raise capital from small businesses without going through the expense of having a prospectus. And in reality, you can write your offer on the back of a serviette as long as you have the warnings to say that this is a risky endeavour. So I'm just going to go through, I actually don't spend a lot of time on ASOB, there's a bit up front and then we're just going to look at some other things as we go through. We've raised 128 million to date in the last five years for, I don't know, 170, 180 odd companies. You go to our platform, you can, there's plenty to read about there. You can look at all the companies raising capital and um, also some of them are in secondary sales where, where the people who've invested in the company are actually selling shares. Anybody know what this is? What it's called? Infographic. It's called. An in this is a new thing. If you if you if you want to say something about your business or something, you create what's called an infograph. And you can go to sites like Pictograph and that. And you know how you can get these interns, and they and you sort of sit there and think, what am I going to do? And somebody said, why don't you get them to make an in infographic? So he said, okay, give me the stats. So that's what I did. But what's good about an infographic is it puts all the information on one page. And so if you cut down, well, of course I've put there. We've raised 128 million to date. 176 companies have raised capital, and on average, 21% of the equity is sold down. So if you've got your own little business and you want some capital, on average, people sell 21%. There's usually around 14 investors. You've got to stay under 20, usually per annum. And the average raise is around 522,000. And I'll email this to you, the, the presentation, so um, you can circulate it, um, Peter. And the minimum raise has been 55, the biggest one's been 3.5, and what they call the median, that means the last 100 companies are 50, is about 300,000. So that's sort of the area that it's been. We could go lower, but then when it costs like five or six or 7,000 to get a raise done up front, as you get lower and lower and lower, people think I'm paying too much to do it. You know, it's got to get le go through legal and all of that. As what Michael said, 50 to 100,000, you know, it's sort of like seven to 10, usually in terms of an ASOB raise. 86% um, of the organisations are still operational. Not a bad split of gender of, of directors. We don't decide it, but it shows that at least there's 20% um, of female that come on those companies. And this is interesting is that 61% of the investors are those retail investors that Peter was talking about. They are really mum and dad investors, people that are supporting usually local young entities wanting to move forward onto the next stage of life. And then later on, it's the sophisticated investors that come in and take the later parcels. In terms of, this, of the location of investors and the businesses are usually about the same. It's 63% um, 60, are in the same state. So people naturally support local businesses, which is good, which, which bears out in terms of the, of the transactions. There are quite a few IT ones, software, health and beauty, food and beverage, mining and all, but we've had bed movers, we've had wine barrels, we've had all sorts of things on the actual um, listing platform. And what effectively happens is, somebody makes a page, a web page, the profile page for their particular offering, and then all these people, be they self-managed super funds, suppliers, angel investors, VCs, celebrities, anybody they like, or we like, or points them towards the platform and they get accumulated there, engaged and talked to during the capital raising. And that's the, the whole thing about it. It's not like grabbing an information memorandum and sort of walking down the street and shopping it around. You are in control of your raising because the people, you're sitting there on your profile, the people come to you and then you can establish a dialogue with them. Um, and, you know, the, Although this was established 25 years ago, it's starting to be called something called crowdfunding. Have you heard of that? 
and that's what that's what they've named it now overseas um, as it's called crowdfunding and um, you know we've been doing it for a long time equity based crowdfunding and basically it means with a little money and a lot of people that um, you can achieve something and there's three different types of crowdfunding there's pledge there's lending and there's investing those three and pledge is what is pledge you give the money you hope you get a watch or something in return but <laughs> You basically you give the money. Now, um, the biggest one in that regard is the one that Michael mentioned, Kickstarter. Great to cruise around there and have a look at the various offers. Perceval is a great one in Australia, the earning an international reputation. There's a new one called I Pledge. But those are the two in Australia that are mainly in the pledge um, area. And how it works is people put their opportunity up on the platform if it's, it's people wanting different things to do. So same with Perceval, they've got all the different things listed there as to what people want you to send money in for. And you could say like this, this is one, they wanted a new cafe to start stop youth homelessness. And um, they wanted over there, somewhere it says how much they wanted. Can you see, is that somewhere there? $40,000 they wanted, right? So far they've raised 14,000, 70 days to go, 128 people have put money in, and um, so they're 37% funded. So people send in the money to support that sort of thing. But here's a good example of one, and I can show you why. You wonder why do people send the money in, don't they? You know, they can't love people that much, you know? <laughs> what do you reckon? This is the Queensland Literary Awards. Do you know what happened to them? Campbell Newman cancelled them. Wasn't he naughty? Like cancelling him. So people got upset about that. And so what happened, they put a site up on Perceval, the Australian crowdfunding platform, and said, look, the Queensland Literary Awards were established in May 2005, and then and, uh, Premier Campbell Newman's decision to scrap them was the instigation for this. And so they decided, right, we need a certain sum of money, let's see if we can get all of these people that are passionate and angry at Campbell Newman to support it. And so along the side they said, if you send $30 in, you get, receive good karma and warm feelings, secure in the knowledge that you've supported an emerging author to climb that first rung on the itinerary ladder. Isn't that nice? But if you send in $100, you'll receive good karma, warm feelings and all that. But I think you also ended up with a book by a previous winner of the things and something else. And then as you went on, for $250 you got all sorts of things and um, by the time it got to 1000 there was a whole lot of signed copies and you know, maybe you got a place of honour or something like that. So the idea was emotional connections to it so that people would feel like if they gave 250 or $1,000 they're supporting a worthwhile cause. It worked. The literary awards happened and everybody lives happily ever after. And people still feel bad about Campbell Newman, but they, say, they can say now, I told you so, people did want to have this. Lending, which was covered previously, uh, the Kiva, how many people have got Kiva accounts? It's well worth getting, a, it's a good, good, great having a Kiva account, isn't it? Funding a rice machine in Cambodia or something like that, but you know, it's good. It means that you're contributing somewhere out in the world. and. Um, Basically what happens is there's all these different people that are looking for funding on there and like there's Edmund in Rwanda, he's 76% of his loans been funded and as you go through you check out who, who you think is good and this is my wife and I account, we've made 14 loans, um, these are the different people and you only loan $25 at a time and uh, they pay the money back, they've always paid us back and when every now and again you get an email and say you've got like hundred dollars in your account you can lend it out again and there's no interest but you get the satisfaction of knowing you've helped somebody have a rice threshing machine in Cambodia or something like that so that's the lending part and the last part is investing that the area that ASOB truly works in is um, I I investing and there are different platforms around the world and like this is an example of one of our listings it's called Localite and it's Annalisa Urquhart is the woman that's driving it. It's a company called Gido, and it's an events, a, events um, company where you put all sorts of local events up there so people know what's going on in their local area. You know, that's what 
she's passionate about and she thinks it's a great thing to do. I can't remember how much they're looking for. Maybe it's like a million dollars. Those red dots means that she's a good way through her raising. And what happens if you put in um, for Adelaide, it'll come up with the different events that are on and you can choose in the different areas what's happening and you can drill down to maybe was the great Jetty Road treasure hunt. And uh, you can buy tickets for the second, the third, the fourth or the fifth. So it means that people can find out what's going on around them. They push a button, look at the app, and they can say, what's going on this morning? You know, and so, oh, we can go to the great, great Jetty Road treasure hunt. But it says here somewhere you've got to be in early because it sells out and things like that. So that's an example of somebody that's raising funds for a platform to market local events and they're doing it on ASOB and they want to raise like say a million dollars. In terms of raising, this is what we've found. When somebody comes along to me and says, look, we're thinking of raising capital, what do you reckon? I have in my head these three circles, story, team and followers. First of all, it's got to be a convincing, compelling and credible story. That's the thing that's most important to me to hear that. And then that there's a balanced, passionate, capable and likeable team. And each one of those words is important. And then finally, there's got to be suitable people to share the story with. There has to be natural followers. Like recently, we had a raise that raised $1.5 million for a dental plan business. And you know who invested? dentists from their self-managed super fund, you know, so there was a natural group of followers. Um, we had a recently raising called Self Wealth, which was a, a, a self-managed super fund portal, and it scored 10 out of 10 in all three of those, and they raised a million in, in, in six weeks, because the followers, one of the directors had 450,000 people using his self-managed super fund software. You know, it was almost like a no-brainer. And so often people have got a great story, they're a bit limited on the team, they have to build it out so it gives credibility, and then you get down to the followers. And some people don't have that many followers in that particular niche, and that's what has to be worked on. So in terms of how it usually works is, when you put it in a circle like that, right up the top there, um, you've got the story that is shared with followers. And through f sharing the followers, people get attention to it. Then after a while, if you keep sharing the story, they become engaged, and we like to think we do it on our platform like that, and eventually in that middle, people invest. And that investment gives a social proof that this is something worth investing in. And, you know, but in reality, with equities investment, they're investing in hope. They hope that the money that you give them to invest, that one day you'll get that money back, and a little bit more. And so, you know, it's got to be a good story and good credibility and things like that for them to actually end up giving you that particular money. And, you know, a story is like the sound of music, and they had a great team, didn't they? The Von Trapp family, and then, of course, the followers. Well, look, there's been, <laughs> they've been doing it for years in terms of the, of the musical. And recently I was in Holland and met this guy because I only went to see him because I thought he did a fantastic job with this. And this was a fella. He, what they wanted to do, you see the town centre up there, up the top corner there, people couldn't get there anymore because the concrete jungles and roads are built, cut off, and it was boring. And you compared to, like, how vibrant it used to be. And so people living on the other sides of the roads couldn't get there to have lunch or do anything. So they said, well, let's build a bridge. And the council said it's going to take 26 years to build a concrete bridge. And they said, that's not good enough. We as citizens have to do better than that. So what they did, the story was, they'd build the long, the bridge, just as long as citizens are willing to pay for it. Can you see that bridge going along there? <laughs> Wasn't that great? And, by, and they have just opened the third part of it. Now that was a story. They, the thing is, and the good thing about it, see those little names along there? Well, you could, if you put 25 euros in, you got your name on a plank. And then if you bought a section that was 125 and you bought a big bit, it was what, 1250. Isn't that good? And then what happened was they got a team together from the architectural college and all around the place to spread the word about we're building these bridge. Come on guys, let's go. And you can get your name on there. And they, you know, obviously they've achieved that. So the followers of course were the citizens and the users of the bridge and the people that were passionate about it and wanted to do it. Which is a great example of like 
It's the same logic that works in our equity funding model, but it's good to see it's actually out in the world now and people, you know, for two years ago when I used to give my talk, people used to wonder what the hell I was talking about, this equity platform that matched investors and things. And I used to have to explain it and everything like that. But yesterday here in Sydney when I stood up, people get it now because the world has caught up to what we've been doing for 25 years. Isn't that right, Michael? <laughs> and, um, you know, it was really simple. Basically, at the end of the day, there was just a website. You put in your contribution, the name you wanted on the board, you clicked the button, and it got accumulated with all the other things that were going on there. So, you know, wasn't it a great story? There was a good team putting it together, and they had lots of suitable people to tell their story to. So in your own business or income opportunity, that's what you have to do. Is it a good, compelling story? When you say it, would people send money in for it? And then is the team got the credibility that if you give them the money, they're definitely going to deliver it? And then in terms of followers, is there a natural group of followers that you'll be able to market to or uncover or find? And so we monitor this in the back end with all sorts of statistics. But, you know, see, this is one particular raising, and that is the number of investors that have, the people, potential investors that come onto the platform. So we know what they do, what they look at, if they download the offer document three times and they watch the video and things like that. And so we can rank them in terms, and we can say to the people raising capital, we can say, look, that guy at the top, Steve, he's had 25 actions on the site, um, we've ranked them as a 15, I reckon you're best to ring those first five people because they seem to be really serious and you can sort it by dates and if they've watched the video for more than two minutes and things like that. And you can also drill down and you can see a person first of all came on and look at that, look they watched the video for 30 seconds, then 90, then 180, then they looked at the ASOB TV, then they requested sale alerts, they became a follower, they downloaded off a document in July. And I met this guy at, at, at the pitch breakfast. We have pitch meetings where they stand there and pitch. And I met him yesterday and he said, oh, I'm really interested in this. And I said, I thought to myself, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's the way our platform works. We, we raise capital for small businesses that are looking to um, raise capital and first of all, it goes out to friends, family, fans and followers. We also have a, a database of 23,000 people that are interested in, inve in investing. But you know, we used to say that and it used to get your business. But in reality, those people don't invest unless they are attracted to your particular offering. They came onto our board because they were interested in investing something else. They invested their money and then they sit there and get emails and then you think, right, maybe they'll invest in mine. And so people used to say, oh, we put it on your platform and we didn't get, all the investors came from our own contacts. We didn't get any from yours. And I'll say, that's exactly how it works. Oh, well, you people, somebody said to me that, you know, you had lots of investors. So we don't say that anymore. And the world has changed with things like Kickstarter and that. So now you can just be straight, brutally honest and say, don't rely on our list of 23,500 people unless you say that you've got Ashton Kutcher on your board of directors. Then people will get excited. But you know, average raise 530,000, 176 raisings. We know it works with the right story, the right team and the right followers. Thank you very much.